live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite here at the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, co-hosting alongside of Stu Miniman. We're joined by Patrick Moorhead. He is the founder and princi principal analyst at More Insights and Strategy. Thank you so much for returning to theCUBE. You're a good friend of theCUBE. Thanks for having me on. I mean, it's a great show, and I literally look for theCUBE everywhere. Oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Good to hear. I probably do about 40 events a year, and I'm pretty sure you're at about we're, 30. We're right there. Of them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> We've got a few more for you to come to uh, oh, yes. in the other places. The year is not over. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, so many announcements today. Yeah. An 87 page book from, yes. the, from the Microsoft comms team. One of the things that is getting a lot of attention is Azure Arc. Satya Nadella right. himself said, I am so excited about this. This marks the beginning of, the, of hybrid computing. Right. What are your first impressions of it? And are you able to yeah. see the immediate differences yeah. between Stack and, and Arc? Yeah, so I think I would say completely expected. Uh, we're out of this drunken sailor mode where everything's going to the public cloud, oh my gosh, and everybody is toast who's not doing this, okay? And now we're in this uh, somewhat sober, right, where 80% of the workloads are still on-prem, and 20 of those have gone on to uh, either SaaS or IaaS or PaaS, but it's expected. Now, Microsoft already had a full stack, i.e. Azure stack, but this takes it up a notch because you can deploy Arc anywhere on anybody's cloud. Uh, they even showed a demo of doing backups to uh, AWS, so whether it's on-prem, and I'm sure they're going to show it running on GCP as well. Yeah. So Patrick, for, for a number of years we've been saying when you line up the big hyperscalers and say, right. who's doing well at hybrid? Microsoft's been at the top of the list there because yeah. they, they, they have a strong footprint in my data center. Uh, Microsoft gave everyone the green light to go do SaaS as much as you can right. because they're pushing everybody to O365. And of course, Azure is, is growing in you know, one of the yeah. leaders uh, in, in public cloud. The announcements this week were compelling, but it made me kind of rethink, as I think you <laughs> laid it out well, and said, but well, we've been talking about hybrid cloud for a number right. of years, but we're not really there. Um, right. So, you know, Arc, it's, it's a first piece, it's, it's only in tech preview, I, I, I think you were saying, for that's right. a singular application, which is databases. Database, that's right. Um, when, when you look out there and you see, you know, the VMware on AWS, Azure, Google, Oracle, IBM, right. you look at, AWS with outposts and those things. Yeah. How is Microsoft doing today at delivering for what customers need yeah. you know, today and moving forward on their cloud journey? So Microsoft was first out of the gate with Azure Stack, right? They were doing hybrid before it was cool. And it was interesting, for about two years when they were rolling it out or building it, they weren't talking about it. So I was thinking, wait a second, is it not catching on or do they, do they want to put more on the big cloud Azure? But in fact, they have been diligently working behind the scenes. And while they had to show Wall Street this, hey, we're the public cloud, they were actively building out uh, their hybrid uh, opportunities. And I, I do believe that when it comes to the slice of hybrid, uh, it, they are leading right now. Now, it depends on where you start. I guess what I do is they're leading if you have a major public cloud. Okay, uh, AWS is obviously there with outposts, and everybody in the audience, uh, we were all in the audience, we gasped when Andy Jassy brought that out. We kind of knew something was being worked on, Anfos uh, as well. And I think to be a credible player, you have to have uh, both implementations, going one way and going the other, being able to work with other people's clouds, but also notice everybody has their single pane of glass strategy. If you want to go all in on Microsoft, you have Arc. Um, and, and that's really the classic Microsoft embrace and extend. Yeah, so Patrick, you said all in on Microsoft. Yeah. And if I, if I look at the enterprise, you've obviously got some Microsoft. There's yeah. probably some things you're doing in Azure. That's right. You're, you're running O365. Uh, you know, there, there's lots of pieces in the more Microsoft yeah. portfolio, but most people aren't all in on anything today. <laughs> That's so right. The, the, the same thing I looked at Anthos and said, in Google Cloud or in my data center, sure, but Anthos on AWS? And no VM, no, yeah. no, no virtualized applications yeah. on Anthos either. So, 
the, the same question for Microsoft right. is if I'm in AWS, you know, have a big footprint of yeah. AWS, is, is this going to fly or, you know, what, what, what's, your, what's your take? Yeah, so it's funny, where I've wound up after 30 years of doing this stuff, is there's always going to be a lock-in. You just have to pick the lock-in that you want. Some people are comfortable with an API lock-in. Some are comfortable with a hardware lock-in. Some people are comfortable with a development environment. And you're going to pick one, just what is it going to be? Um, the reality is in a Fortune 500, you're going to have multiple panes of glass. You just need to determine which two or which three are you comfortable with. Maybe you'll have a pane of glass for deployment. Maybe you'll have a pane of glass uh, for ops. The, the interesting thing uh, that I'm really looking for though is where this heads with multi-cloud. Because I believe, at least in my definition, multi-cloud is kind of fiction if you talk about actually managing it. Because DevOps are cool, but you know when you go to multi-cloud, you break dev and you break ops. So this is a way, uh, Arc is a way to keep uh, if you buy into their dev and their ops and their security, you would go all in uh, on Arc. So I, I'm actually interested in what you were talking about with Microsoft going, sort of working behind the scenes to Wall Street presenting this one thing, but really yes. working behind the scenes. And then talking about being <laughs> at the conference and everyone gasping at Andy Jassy. How much are companies really paying attention to every burp of these companies in terms of their competition with each other yeah. to, to be number one? Oh, they'll all say that they don't track the competition, but they all say they all have these massive competitive teams that are operating in real time, and I guarantee you, all of Microsoft's competitors are watching all these, are, are here, uh, and doing that. Now, I think the best companies are looking forward, uh, trying to change the game if they have to change the game. The entrenched vendors are really, uh, have been playing catch-up mode, right? If you were 100% on-prem, and you were talking about the public cloud, uh, you're going to be in trouble. I think, actually, Oracle's a great example of uh, they're in trouble, particularly with IS. I see database as a service, but it's like too little, uh, too late, and I think they're paying the price right now. Yeah, so Patrick, uh, thanks for teeing up the Oracle <laughs> piece, because one of, one of the topics that Satya repeatedly talked about in the keynote was right. trust. It's actually the exponential <laughs> uh, to, uh, to, to, to the environment. Right. And if you talk about the ecosystem, Microsoft, if you look at the hyperscalers, yeah. is probably more trust than others. We talk about uh, people wanting to break up companies. Well, you know, we tried to break up Microsoft, uh, you know, <laughs> back, back years ago. We, we, we know what happened there. Um, and Oracle was up on stage at Oracle Open World saying, you, you want to run Oracle in the cloud, here's Azure, they're our partner. Yeah. Uh, we actually think that was a, a key piece of the Jedi deal, uh, is enabling that environment. So the question I have for you is, you know, first of all, do you agree that the yeah. ecosystem believes that Microsoft is more trusted, but what about customers? I think you actually made a tweet about it, right. um, because I wonder, you know, historically speaking, Microsoft was not the most trusted, it was the one that you know, was right behind Oracle as to who I spent the most <laughs> licensing money to. Microsoft has changed, are they a trusted partner for companies building their IT strategy? I have to say, based on the last, I'll call it five years, the level of Microsoft trust has raised. And there are other players who make Microsoft look like the super trust zone, okay? I mean, in what they're maybe what they're doing in uh, breaking consumer privacy, uh, let's say 95% of your business is advertising, <laughs> right? Let's just say, let's what just kind say, of company? Uh, imagine, can they have? <laughs> company. imagine this, right? Uh, having commercial offerings that are SaaS offerings out there, uh, I think you do have to ask the question. But but listen, I, I think um, nobody's Mother Teresa here. Okay, everybody's trying to get business, but I do believe, particularly since Satya has been here, the level has tr of trust has has gone up, and I hear it from from clients that I that I meet with all the time. Um, other people are on the naughty list for sure, even those 95% advertising companies uh, who haven't, let's say, done something that's horrible, but it's just the the notion that something could go wrong. I mean, enterprises, they're slow to adopt, they're very conservative, and it makes great fun. 
It's sports, exactly. So one of the other big announcements is Power Platform. That's right. What are what are you what are your impressions of yeah. this? I mean, is it is it just semantics? I mean, is this just really the umbrella of a lot of things we've seen before, or, yeah. or is it something new and different? So we did we did see some brand changes and name changes, but we did some, did see some some real movement here. And I like to put, even though they're different, I like to put uh, uh, BI Dynamics 365 and Power kind of in the same region because it's hey, I'm teeing up um, HR app for you or CRM, uh, but then you're going to build apps on top of that. And that's what, where, where power comes into the play. I think the RPA portion was relatively new in what they brought out, but I wouldn't say this was the big news rollout for, uh, uh, for power. I do think, interestingly enough, is it is, it is their largest growth area. If you think about uh, what, let's say, Salesforce is racking up, what SAP is doing out there, uh, even a Workday, that is, if I look at the cubic dollars, that are available, that is their first or second business driver. So I was expecting a little bit more news here. How about you? Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just the host here. <laughs> you two are the analysts, so you know what you're talking about. I, I think that power, I mean, what, what do you think, Stu? Yeah, uh, no, but, but Patrick, uh, you know, from the yeah. people I've been talking to, uh, there's a mixture of some of it was pulling everything together, yeah. um, but there is a rapid movement. Um, you know, when I talk to the RPA vendors out there, it's That's not right. like it's not like they're all quaking in their boots. They're still partnering with Microsoft. Sure, we see IBM and SAP. Everybody's going after that environment. Come on, RPA is the gateway drug to AI. It is. It is. It not? It uh, is. Rebecca was at uh, UiPath a, 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 exactly a, a, a show recently talking about that. So um, back to that trust there. Microsoft is not usually making announcements that you walk across the booth and there's a few people you know, saying, can we roll out the beer early because we think our business is ruined. Right. That's where some of that trust <laughs> right. um, is right. in Microsoft. Um, but you know, that being said, uh, you know, it, it was curious to me that they didn't have any big partnerships announcement. You know, last year McDermott was up on stage uh, and uh, you know, He's changed companies uh, right. you know, since then, uh, but th there was a, a couple of small open source announcements, but not any large partnership announcement. So, um, ecosystem majorly important. How, any, any commentary from you on how Microsoft is doing yeah. uh, in that grand battle for so ecosystem? If, so if I look the past couple years when some of the biggest players, CEOs were on stage, right? it was about ODI. Hey, let's share our data. SAP, probably one of the bigger one, even though they're, they're doing it with Salesforce as well. And I think that was a giant, uh, giant leap for folks. And then I think, second of all, um, we weren't going to see Larry on stage, uh, because by the way, and I agree with you on Jedi, that was a huge deal. It, to me, it was Oracle outsourcing IaaS to Azure, right? Um, that would have been newsworthy. Okay, if I look at what could have been up here, not that there aren't more strategic deals that could be done, I think, there, I think people are busy executing at this point. Uh, but if you look at who's going to share the data with ODI, that was the biggest. Uh, working with different clouds, well, we're not going to get AWS to get up on stage uh, uh, here, right? We're not going to get uh, GCP up here on stage. Although, although we could have gotten WebEx up stage, because apparently WebEx at a Cisco and Teams are becoming friends, and maybe we'll see that on a slightly smaller stage. It yeah, makes, it's more, it more of an Enterprise sense. Connect kind of launch than it is a Microsoft show. Exactly, but I was surprised, you know, and, and I think it's a testament to how powerful Teams actually is. Uh, and it's funny when um, um, uh, Teams, which everybody thought was dead, after Slack was announced, and Hangouts with Google uh, has actually ended up being the darling of the enterprise. And not just because it comes free uh, with your uh, M1 subscription, right? It's really, it's a good product. It's a shockingly good product. You don't have to do any of the, uh, any security, if you have any security challenges with anything in Microsoft, you'll have an issue here, but that's not the case. It all uses the back end of Microsoft for security and, and, and regulatory. So anyways, I know I'm veering off here, but there was one partner announcement that I saw. It was Cisco WebEx uh, being friends with Teams. 
can't we all just get along? I mean, that's, I know. there we go. When there's money for everybody. <laughs> right, exactly. We need every contributor. Every and we can't, and it's too expensive to go out on your own. Patrick, always <laughs> so much fun to have you on the show. Thanks for having me Thank on. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite.